Okay, so you're welcome back to my channel. This is Emanuela, and today we are going to be talking to you on something very, very productive, something very, very important. <laughs> so, the person with me is, um, should I say it? <laughs> well, you can. So, the person with me, or oh, let me say, is the best white student in West Africa 2018. So today we are going to be learning a lot from him. We are going to be learning. <laughs> of course, you know it's not by human efforts that you can actually be the best in, in West Africa because a lot of people there are intelligent. So we are going to be learning something extra, probably that he did, that made him to be the best. And then something very important is that we are going to get some study techniques from him how he was able to read. Some of you have been asking me questions, whether it is, is it better to read in the morning, afternoon or night and a whole lot. So today we are going to find out <laughs> from him. So let me start by asking him to please introduce himself. Sorry. Yeah, so good day everyone. As you said, okay, I don't think you should mention my name, but my name is Aruti Ba Oyuwa Shenwara Pita Oyuwa Ferran. Mm. So I am a, currently a third year medical student of the University of Ibadan. I attended Air Force Secondary School, Ikeja, Lagos State. Yeah, proudly military. Right. And it was really a fun time being in such a setting, actually. So then I am the second of three boys in my family. And from Togi State, I'm Nigeria, obviously. Okay, why didn't you, sorry, let me just ask you this question. Why didn't you consider going into, since you went to Air Force, why didn't you consider going into NDA, uh -huh. be, being a pilot, mm -hmm. or going into all this, um, or even I becoming get, a soldier? I get actually. Yeah, well, some things are not just for, for me actually. I don't know when it's going to be me too. You don't know how to fight. It's not my thing, Joe. Like, definitely, that's not where I'm. That's not my placement. Even like by divine election, then so it's never something I consider because it's rigorous. And some of my friends are there, so all the best. <laughs> actually. Okay, so how do you feel being the best white student in the whole West Africa? How do I feel? Well, the feeling has worn off because it's been like years now. Just like three More like, how did I years. feel? Like, how did I feel? Well, yeah. well, I still feel like honored now that, wow, God could honor me with such a feat because it wasn't something I deemed myself worthy of attaining. I don't know if it's big, big grandma music, but just like I didn't see myself in that picture. No, it's not big grandma, we understand. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I didn't see myself in that picture actually. So when it came, it felt out of this world, man. I was like really, really existing to my dreaming and stuff. So I feel now I feel honored because I know being um Someone who has attained that fit makes me automatically like a sort of mentor to so Lots many students, people. secondary school students, and yes. the like. So it just makes me, it keeps me in check actually, and it keeps me. And that's very like true it. because I am just so happy you, mentor, you mentioned this mentorship because most times when I interview someone, the next thing is, please, can I get his number? Please, can I get his email address? <laughs> So would you like to give out your number or your email address? Well, it's, it's not okay. going to be on YouTube. Somebody that sends me a mail for... Yeah, I'll give you Good. now. I mean, when the person sends a mail, would you give us either your email address or your number? Yeah, I will. I'll give my email address. Your email address. So, it's very okay. So when did you, when did you start preparing? Should I put the question that way? No. Like, did you from... Maybe entering secondary school, think that I am going to be the best, best white student in the whole West Africa. And how were you doing it? Were you doing it, gra, gra, gra? No, 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 I have to be the best. I have to be the best. Or how did you go about it? Well, how to answer that question? The first question 
It wasn't like from the outset of my secondary education actually that this dream came into my heart. Like when I started secondary school, I doubted if I had any such. I doubt if I had any such goal. I just wanted to just continue being on top. Like let me be honest, I just wanted to continue being on top because like in primary school, like. There was really no competition and everything. Yeah. So I, I knew that coming to a prestigious school such as, or going to a prestigious school such as AFSS, there would be competition. So I just wanted to be on top basically. And unfortunately, for the first year, GS1, I wasn't the one on top throughout the set. I was on top in my class, yes, yeah. but they were, I just discovered that ah, there were other champions too from their primary schools yeah. who came <laughs> and then they were, as it, like what the scores proved was that they were better than me at that point. So just meant I had to double up. So I would say, yes, I had the winning mindset, even though it was, it was not how do I put it now? It wasn't perfect in that it was born out of competition. Okay, I just yes, want to be the yes. best of the dog. You know, those days, if a lady or a girl now, and this is no disrespect to the female gender, if yes. a girl like scores or does better than you, your parents might uh, <laughs> berate you that you're not serious. You started playing, even teachers, yes. My mom said, Look at you. So that mindset <laughs> just. Isn't was that? wrong, but I thank God that I was able to deal with it as time went on, actually. But it was a progressive thing. It wasn't as if the whole mindset, just the competitive part of the mindset just died down. That would take, take some years of learning. So, but as to what, exactly when this goal came into view was after junior secondary school, where, like, I was on break, so my brother, was opportune to be a part of the school team to attend one of the WAEC um, annual general meetings or what do they call it i'm trying to remember but one of the, their annual events where they like meet and do a lot of things but also they award the best candidates from the previous year in WAEC in the WASC rather in the exam so my brother came home and he was complaining that all the winners were Ghanaians, first, uh, second, third in West Africa. So like, though it was hosted in Lagos, Nigeria, it was imagine. a Ghanaian flag that was raised. And so it wasn't, it was like, also that. Wasn't then, so good. it gave me the program of events and I was, I was able to read through and see the names and profiles of the winners. And I was like, they were all guys, all Ghanaians. And then they also had a list of the people who had won like previous years and i saw that it was since 2011 a nigerian showed up on the list this year we were talking about was 2015 they just awarded the 2014 winner so i was like and the nigeria was even third with the other the first two Ghanaian. so it was like nigerian dominance ended because there was a period of nigerian dominance in 1999 down to 2007, it was all Nigeria. But from then on, I didn't know Ghanaians just picked up. So I was wondering, ah, a Nigerian can actually win this thing. We've dominated before, we are more populated, and we are better, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> so that just kicked into me that, come, your name can appear on this thing, on this um, program of events one day. And then my brother was also saying something like that to me too. It's probably my parents, I don't know. So that dream was best that period, but it went, um, how do I put it? It went, how do I put it? Underground. Below, underground like, <laughs> because I had to face senior secondary school work squarely for my first one. So I wasn't really like, just driving towards it in court throughout my senior secondary your school. Best. I was just, yeah, I just wanted to be as diligent as possible because thanks to my parents, my teachers, and the wonderful classmates I had. Diligence was already like an attitude I had. Just, that was how I was built, to be diligent. So, for example, in SS1, in secondary school, I had already been well taught by one of my teachers that you can study in advance. If there's a holiday, study SS1 stuff. So I actually started studying SS1 stuff, coupled with some lessons during the break between GS3 and SS1, which was a long break. 
so I'm already exposing some of the like techniques that I think stood me out. Then also, she also told us that it's possible to, after you finish school work for a day, go through all that you've done, go through it instead of allowing it become stale, because there are probably even some things the teacher said you didn't understand. So you allow that one become still, even the ones you understand, you allow them become still and wait till like weekend or when it's time for the test, you start reading it. That is not the optimal use of your time, of your intellect, and then you are not maximizing the efforts of the teacher in class. So she taught us those things and then I applied them, not 100%, I wasn't 100%, I wasn't perfect, yes, in applying them, but to the best of my ability, so sometimes, for example, I would read on the way home because my parents yeah. drove us to and from school. So to and from school, long enough to read, actually. So I used to do that. Thank God for that wisdom, actually, because I actually spent a lot of time on the road. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things I was doing, actually. Okay. Then, okay, yeah. So, but I wasn't, like, driving towards it. That wasn't really, that didn't really, surface again until like SS3 when the exam was there, I was like, do you remember this dream you have? So, yeah. so from everything he said, I hope you are making a lot of judgments because I've just said a lot of things down. He has talked about information. These are the things I brought out. Number one, information. He got the information from his brother. Where are you getting your own information from? Watching this video is you getting an information. Yeah. Are you making good use of it? So he got his information. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. He got his information from his brother, and then, from what I I can also um, pick up from what he said, having someone like a role model, because the brother was like, ah, this thing. There was nobody from um, Nigeria that did that, and all. And his brother actually believed it in him, or his parents were just like, ah. Oh. You can, do, you can do it. You can do it. That's can having someone like a role model, someone that believes in you. If you don't have a role model yet, no problem. I am, we are a bit small, but we can still be a role model. <laughs> we, are <laughs> we are not small. We are we are great in Christ. Yeah. In Christ. Basically, I think anyone you can look up to, anyone who is respectable, respectable, and who has gone ahead of you can be your room model. It doesn't ha have to be one highly placed person up exactly. there, actually. Because exactly. some of the people I looked up to, for example, was one of them is was the head boy in SS3 when I was in SS2. His name is Farhan. Farihan, sure, but we pronounce it Farhan. He was the head boy. He wasn't too so much. He was still excellent in the in his academics and he did everything he did well. You for see? example, there's a military um, setting it's like we're in a military setting generally, but there's a military group students can join called the cadet, okay. where you be you do military trainings, you do military parades, you you be treated as if you're in the military basically. So your seniors in SS3 can call you out of a class if you're in just one and call you to the cadet ground. So so he was partaking in that and he was their head. He was the commander in chief of the cadet and he was juggling them well academics head boy cadet and everything so he's one of the people i look up i looked up to and then exactly. even my classmates were sources of help and inspiration so it doesn't have to be one high, highly pleased person up there exactly learn from so, anyone they can get a role model and then he had the hunger when you saw that it was only um Ghanians, he, he had the hunger you that, yeah, that kind of that thing you say something like exactly <laughs> so you you need to have the hunger for excellence as well and he was persistent not like the kind of persistence of um let me hide this information from my mates so that they will not be better or something that one is a, a kind of wickedness but he was just like okay if it happens fine if it's not this one but then he had that in mind and he continued pursuing excellence so he was persistent he was consistent of course they had him reading even in the car and um people also believed in him so get people that believe in you so that your best can come out and you were just trying to be diligent on his own studying in advance as he heard from his teacher and then um 
it is possible to go through everything you have done in a day i picked that one even for myself at least if you um do something in a day try to go through it and then he applied everything he didn't just hear he didn't hear from this year and he came out from this year or he didn't hear from this year and he came out from this one he applied where is your own application it's not just about listening to this video it's about you applying what you have um, read and that makes me to say something that if you actually if your hunger for excellence is actually clean is clean then you should be able to at the same time also share this video with your friends so that they too they can get the information that you are getting yeah <laughs> they can get the information you are getting and then come and participate in this so i think you said speaking it, of sharing okay. like what well, i wanted to mention it but i was like probably so as not to spend so much time answering the question okay. one of the things that really helped me was the fact that okay my classmates saw me as someone who was distinguished academically and so naturally they came to me okay help me please help with that how to resolve this and like i was always open to help them in fact some of sometimes i would go to them and say okay which areas are you having issues in this yeah let's do it together and see? like it wasn't i wouldn't see it as just hey, merely, do or me, die no, or like, something. merely me helping them it okay. was both of us sharpening each other actually like yeah. when you teach others when you share i think that is like the peak of knowledge when yes. you can teach others comfortably. So that helped me. It got to the point where in some classes, like I remember my sister tell me she teacher, God bless her. Mrs. Amen. She used to give us like she would teach and then in that same class she would give us exercises to do and she'll be there. So she'll come and check our solutions, like she would come to your table, check what you wrote down, maybe spank you, not spank you, but scold you and everything. So chemistry teachers are like that. So but she was I really loved like her the chemistry she taught was the one I understood the most, SS2. So so like in that condition now, most of the time I would have solved, I'll probably most likely be the first to finish solving. Or one of the first chap. Then it's like got to a point where the teacher even allowed other people to come to my seat and check, oh yeah, Shana, how did you do this? How did you do that? Then I'll teach them, I'll put them through and everything. So most times it became a communal thing. Like people just flock my seat, not only my seat, to other people. Okay. But the point was that I was available. Yes. I was available to others to like give help. And in that way, I was also strengthening myself. So I believe we weren't created to be independent but interdependent good interdependent because we are also not created to be dependent yes it is interdependent like it is a symbiotic relationship, relationship. So they helped me i helped them i also remember a particular time physics particles electricity i didn't understand how to connect those devices in series and in parallel but like i met my best friend then he's still a very close friend now Israel and Ifalaji, I think I'll be calling their name so that <laughs> <laughs> so and I told him to put me through because he was in technology class. Mm -hmm. So and he put me through beautifully and understood it and I was grateful. And then in the WASC exam itself, electricity was one of the practicals I did. Electricity is simple, short, As no waste time. Sweet. So but I didn't understand it. <laughs> ah, wow. And then electricity he, was he like put my... me through. I would have had to do something like optics, which is optics, optics is really is sweet, but yeah, optics is time taking yes. and you have to be accurate. Yes. Electricity, once you co connect the instrument, you the instrument will be accurate everything. for you. But optics, you are the master of your career. So I did yes, yes. mechanics and electricity and just I, like I, I don't know why till today. Can you imagine? I don't forget the help. So it wasn't as if I was only because the one. Because the help became product. Yes, dishing out help. I was also receiving help, and there were times like where I would be telling my classmates, for example, I don't think I'm, I'm like qualified to be head boy. Probably I, I didn't have a good enough image of myself. But they told me, you are, you are, you are a head boy and everything. <laughs> so they were really no. I love he my has classmates. He has one. He has one. Science. Uh. Those guys. SS1 to SS3 science, those guys were like a rock and even though I had flaws too, they just loved me and took me yeah. for who I am. Even though I had flaws. And they didn't, they weren't envious or jealous of me. Because mm -hmm. most times they used to joke that I just make them look like they are not serious. 
<laughs> or anything. Like so, but they weren't envious. They just took it in good faith. Yeah. Helped me and also received help. So it was really nice. Exactly. So, like, That's wonderful what life is. Surrounded me, sir. That secondary school. I believe it was also. A handwork of God. Yes, that's how life. Exactly, that's how life is. Actually, you don't have to. It's actually a witchcraft spirit to be against somebody that's always maybe somebody that's the best in your class or something. Because it actually happens in my own secondary school. It was actually good. It was actually, but it was as if. Um, in our SS1 SS2, there was this kind of witchcraft spirit that if you saw something, solve. A question and get it correctly. The other students will carry your paper to the teacher to ask, No, I don't think she got this thing. <laughs> I don't understand her method. The teacher will have to explain the method. And it was so. <laughs> As a rich class spirit. If you get something like 60 something, maybe at the highest, no, you are not qualified to be that. The teacher, in fact, the teachers will be like, What's wrong with you guys in this class? <laughs> Oh, but I think God, there was no such thing. There was. <laughs> well, it's just probably because we were childish. You know, I told you that when I started secondary school, I had that competitor's mindset. Although not as bad as <laughs> taking so old school. This one was just. But then I used to like monitor those that were my rivals in court. I asked their clients, like, what is this called here? What is this called here? That was just yes, one, just two. Exactly. But not that I will now challenge it, but. Well, I was just competing. It's all just unnecessary. It's all just yeah, highly, unnecessary. highly unnecessary. And I, I, the good side of having a good spirit, a good success spirit, is that before you know yourself unconscious, unconsciously, you start being the best. Because I was not interested in their competitive stuff, I found out that if we write exam and I get the highest, all of them are at peace. At least yeah. it's not the, it's not the competitive. <laughs> at least because yeah. they will feel like at least uh, she's not among the distance. So that's basically it. Have the right spirit, please. You don't need to start bringing others down or start um, feeling somehow just to make yourself the successful one. It's not good. So um, study method, please. When is your best time to study? I think. Uh, I, I am taking too much of your time. No, I am no, very no. sorry. No, no, no. It's okay, fine. Okay. I'm enjoying the interview. Totally the reminiscence. Okay, okay, best time to study, that would be morning, yeah. personally. In the morning. In the morning, right? Yeah. After sleeping. Yeah, after sleeping. Although I usually don't study immediately with, or like on waking mm. up. The first thing is fellowship with God. Yeah. So, but so so most times that kind of robs me of the opportunity to study. But it's worth it. But my best time to study is in the morning or in the afternoon. But I can. It's also possible to study at other times. I don't think having a best time to study restricts you from studying at other times or from building your ability to study. At when, other times. Well, yeah. regardless of the time, actually, because there might come situations that will make it necessary for you to study at that time you feel it's inconvenient so you have to adapt to so you have to learn of study. how to study well regardless of the time if you are studying the night then make sure you sleep for some time before we can to study because the point about knowing your best study time is so that you target that time and do your most effective and most productive study like you know you retain a lot of what you study at that point in time you are focused so it's a time and place where you are focused and you can create it, it doesn't have to be something that is already there you can create it yourself like put your mind to it when it's time to study put yourself in the study mode i don't know if you understand what i mean but being focused sure, right yes like your best study time is not just a particular time in the morning or in the day it's a time when you are most focused most productive mm-hmm. and most ready to learn. So, like, I might have a lot of things to say about studying, but I think this is all. Then also, I wanted to say something. If you heard, like, listened well to what I was saying previously, you hear that I said I, w- I took advantage of times like while I was in transit from school home, then from home to school also. That's unconventional, right? Like, is not normal it's not the norm yes yes so yes. actually i would say conventional studying like the studying where you pick your books 
put it, put it on a table, and open it and read it. You should not restrict yourself to that actually. Mm. Like the unconventional modes of studying can also help make studying more fun. Like those conventional modes, you can get tired of them if that's what the only thing you're doing. I'm not talking down on them actually. If yeah. all the studying you do is during random times, you are not serious. But <laughs> like the human easily gets bored of routines that require him just doing the same thing. So discipline will keep you there, but you can spice it up with reading at just just find a pocket of 30 minutes time use it to read through something use it to revise something you've read but like make sure you maximize the conventional way and the unconventional way that's the balance studying. not reciting yourself to conventional because sometimes i find out i get bored like the time like the conventional mode of studying sometimes just becomes ineffective because i'm bored like just sitting there at the table and things. So I switch to the unconventional, walk around, scroll through what I'm reading, then come back to sit and everything. But don't just be rigid, sir. that's the point. You can make use of both the conventional times and then the unconventional times of reading. They will make it very productive. That's very, very true. Because um, I just want to say something from um, from Cynthia, I think she talked about a, a lot on studying as well. So she talked about she also writing some things in a joker. You know that times that you'll just be working like this and you just feel like, okay, let me just use this opportunity and memorize something. That's the unconventional way of studying, as he said. So you can still maximize that time. And from Cynthia also said something about. So Maybe you can refer them to which video exactly. Yes, okay. I will I will put the link to the video on the comment section so that you will see it. I'll pin it so that you can um go to the video. I would like you to listen to that video so that we can just go on with this. So um I think the the best time you read Best study method. I think you said all of that. Study method. Okay, study method. No, you've not what said it. What is a study method? <laughs> yeah, so let me show you study method. I can put this textbook here. Put this one here. Put different textbooks and be reading them at the same time. Yeah, yeah people that I study go that way. <laughs> like, it depends flu, right? on what I'm studying and just what I feel is the best method for that time. Like, I feel like the reason most students see studying as boring is because they don't. They don't see any need to be creative with it, so yes, just yes, open the textbook, and so the chemistry is boring. I mean, like, I'll finish boring. this textbook now, now, now. And you just pour in the chemistry. One of the things you can do to make your study effective is get interested in what you are studying. Make it fun to you. If it's not fun to you, you will resent it. And when you are studying it, it will just be like a chore, be sleeping a off. task. <laughs> and many of us don't like. Some of us don't like. Probably. That, just think of that chore you don't like at home. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> well, most of them, I just I see them as already necessary. But maybe. Maybe washing the toilet. But, eh, you or never enjoy doing it. Deep. You never yes, enjoy doing yes, it. Yes, so, but you have to do. For so many students, studying is like that <laughs> for them, and that's what that's what um, damages their efficiency. Studying is a chore, but you can cultivate interest in learning and in what you're learning exactly so that it becomes a time oh I'm going to learn something. Tie it to purpose, tie it to what you apply it to later in life. Be interested in it. So when you are choosing a course to study university, don't choose a course you get bored of and then you start wondering how to pass the course. Yeah. So just make studying interesting. Studying can be made interesting actually. Mm -hmm. So okay, study method. So and uh, most times Okay, like in secondary school, okay, since we are addressing secondary school students, how did I say? Uh, My so note. So. Okay. Uh, okay, no problem. You I'll can have you some other time for university students. No, right? no problem. Uh, Thank how you. Much do, how much of time have I spent in university students? system that I, I will do. Uh, yeah, so anyhow, you, remember we talked about your models. Some things I will have learned. Yeah. I want to use my <laughs> But in secondary school, my note was like the main thing. Because, you know, it was kind of composing to write notes in secondary school. <laughs> Teachers will check for your notes. Yes, you nah, submit notes. that one has math safe. Uh, you submit <laughs> notes if you didn't bring your notes that day. Hey. <laughs> Auntie, I didn't bring my notes. I forgot it at home. You didn't forget your lunchbox. No. No. So, notes was really composing. And 
thank God, thank God, I was able to like God. maintain good notes in secondary school. So when I said, for example, I go through what I do for I would, like uh-huh. everything I do for that is my notes. Okay. The notes because I I don't I don't because I just even know. in school here he writes notes. Yes, although we give glory to God. Yeah. <laughs> so, but like. I just loved the way my teachers presented their stuff, so I love putting them down. Then when I'm reading, I know I'm reading exactly what is on the mind of the teacher, what I've understood from the teacher. So don't despise your teacher's notes yes, for textbooks. Too, so. It's good to read textbooks too for further knowledge, but build on the foundation that your teacher has laid. That's why like there should be a continuity between the class like what the teacher said in class study. and you're studying so that's why you don't get taught something this week and then it's eight weeks later when it's time for the test it's that, again, sorry. like you don't it is not ideal for you to get taught something this week and eight weeks later when it's time for the test you're not trying to recall what the teacher Can't said in say. class you don't have a note you know it to be somehow so that's why let's get it fixed in your mind that there ought to be a continuity between what your teacher is telling you in class and what you go back to study. The reason your teacher is teaching you is so that you go back to study it and then your knowledge is enriched by that. So my notes, then after that textbook, probably after I've read the topic for the first time, then I'll go to the textbook. Or sometimes it's the notes side by side with textbook. And everything. But basically, as I said, I just go with the flow. Sometimes I decide oh, yeah, to shut down, shut out textbooks. I'm talking about even now in the university. Shut out textbooks, read the notes, what's the notes saying? So sometimes I consult the textbooks totally because I feel okay, I've gotten the information from the notes. So what else? Past questions very necessary. Mm-hmm. Although, I was about to ask all past questions. Like past questions was a regular thing you now, like for the that why past question would be it. Mm-hmm. There is a, there comes a class you get, maybe it's a two, you have to start buying them because you know, you <laughs> yes, yes. So like, that was, became part of my study. Although I wasn't rigid about it sometimes, I just go to pass question, practice some OBJ questions. And yeah, for those of you probably in SS1, if you get past questions now, it's good. But don't feel bad if most of the questions I know what you know. I know what you know because that's how exactly how it feels. Because you need to feed this correct. Yes. Feel like I don't know anything. Especially here in med school. Yes. You know, it was like in SS, it was like a transition. In SS one, I yes. barely knew many things. It's just okay. I was getting taught. I was getting taught. So yeah. I was like, okay, this question I can attempt it. Wow. So I can attempt this whole number fourteen in physics. Mm. Why like twenty fourteen? Wow, let me attempt it. So I would like once I discovered I could do a question, I will attempt it, yeah. check the answers and stuff. So it was in SS three the uh, the climax. We've been taught almost everything, and so exactly. so don't be discouraged if it looks like ah, these questions are not for me. Even if you're in SS one or SS two, with time you see that why I could test you with questions that are very much within your capacity. Yes. What you have been taught. So. Get yourself familiar with the past question. And I will send the questions from heaven. Yeah. It's from what from you have entered. From the syllabus, actually. It's from what you have entered. So, that's it. So, before we um, give it. Okay. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, anything else you would like to say? Final advice and things like that. Uh, well, thank God. My story, which I like that that my story can't be completely explained on the ground of my efforts and all the help I got from man and everything. It's beautiful. But, for example, when the dream was better in the history, one of the first things I did was pray to God. Even though I didn't know much about God and everything, I just knew the God answer prayer. So I prayed, I committed the dream to God. And, okay, help me. Then when the dream resurfaced when I was in SS3 about to ride the wire, that period was a tough, trying, tasking, demanding period. Mm-hmm. SS3 is naturally tough. Tasking and demanding. You are a prefect. And then yeah, I lived very far from school. Then everything was just just came to a head. And I was very much stressed. And I was like, hmm giving my best in this way won't be possible without God's help. So I went back to God again, made my request for him, asked him for strength. Then also I was specific 
about I give I asked him okay this is the target I want this is what I want for the exam please help me get it then I also asked him specifically Lord I also want to be the best in work in West Africa grant unto me this request in Jesus name Amen. so I pray the prayer so I wouldn't say I had much faith that I would be able to get the best wife results in West Africa because that's why wow, there are many brilliant people out there now. So you know, you should be able to relate to what I'm saying actually. When you just feel like ah me, out of how many million. Yes, so, but yes. That's I, how it I, feels. I received strength from God. I was able to put in the best I could, like in final preparations for the exam because I believe SS1 to SS3 were periods of preparation for the exam, one way or the other. So, and things would have been more difficult if I had been like slothful during this period. So, but I received strength, God gave me confidence. You know, I said I was already getting a bit discouraged, discouraged anxious because yeah. there was pressure too. There was like teachers in my school were like, you, ah, you must be the best in this school, you I must have like so so so. I was head boy, people and, looked yeah. up to me. And everything. So there was pressure, but thank God for giving me the strength to stand the pressure. Like it is beyond scientific explanation. <laughs> the level of confidence I had just wow. before, like when the exam came, just just few weeks before the exam, I was really tense and anxious. But I thank God that God worked out that whole period for my good. He helped me learn that it is not by might or by power, or by strength of human effort. When when you want to go beyond the threshold of human effort, then you need God's help. Yes. So it is good to make all the efforts, it is good to be diligent, but it is God that crowns your efforts with good success, with more than proportionate success, with the success he had in mind. Left to myself, I would have just said, let me just have a good wife, good wife. but God had more in mind. Good. So he helped me and then all the glory belongs to him. Yeah, so basically it depends on God too. So important, it's so important. So what else? Nothing else actually. And then yeah, if you can build a strong relationship with God from wherever you are, it's good. The thing is that I wish I started earlier with God because even like at this point, like where I was placing my request before God, I wasn't really in a good relationship with God. You just I, I just God. knew to pray, God answers, I went to church and everything. But I thank God that he still helped me. I think it's one of the ways he, he drew my attention, like he caught my attention. Like, wow, so God can answer my prayer like this. So, but when you partner with God, you learn so much more, so much more than I learned while I was in second school about him. So he still helps me today. That's the bottom line. But you can start early. Yeah. So that's just don't, don't, don't let your background, your estimation of yourself limit you. You are created for excellence and you have the capacity to be excellent. Just give yourself to the right things, then trust God. You'll be amazed. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Amazed. So, yeah, that's all I have. Thank wow. you very much for Thank you. the interview. Thank <laughs> you for your attention, viewers at home. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation so please make use of the comment section and then um let us know what you have learned from this video and then make a commitment that you are going to apply everything you have learned thank you once again for watching <laughs> please subscribe to this channel if you have not done that please subscribe and then as we have said earlier please share the video to your friends as well so that they can learn from you once again thank you for watching <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>